This video is a demonstration of how to use the program VGL2 to complete genetics problems for Bio202 at Duke. To get the program, download one of the zipped files from Sakai. Download the Windows one if you're running Windows, and download the Mac one if you're running Mac OS. What we'll download is a zipped folder like this. VGL2 will not run correctly from inside a zipped folder. You have to unzip this folder. That's very simple on a Mac. You simply double click on it, and the unzipped folder will appear on top of the zipped one. However, if you're running Windows, it's slightly more complicated, so I'm going to show you how to do it. You go to this folder, you right-click on it, choose Extract All. Extract it wherever you want. I'm going to extract it to my desktop. And it starts copying. That takes a minute, so I'll... And once it's finished copying, you've got an unzipped folder that looks like it's got stuff inside it, as well as your folder with the zipper on it. It's this one with stuff inside it that you need to open up, double click, to run the program. So inside that folder, here we've got an application icon, That's which, and it looks very similar on Mac. You double click that to start the program. Leave the student file alone. The problems folder contains special Duke problems. That's what VGL2 will default to when you open a new pro problem. And, but there is another folder that has the original VGL2 problems from the VGL2 website, so that if you want to do some practice problems and know what sort of problem you're doing, you can do one of those. So to start the program, either double click on this. You can create a shortcut to this and put it in your start menu or down on your taskbar or on Mac in your dock or in your applications folder. Um, or you can just have this in a convenient place where you can double click on it. Go ahead and click run. This program is safe, I promise you. And I'll resize this so that it fits where you can see it. Alright, so this is the window that opens. I will be using these icons here in the toolbar there are equivalent options in either the file or the utilities menu as well. So to start a new problem, you click on this new problem icon and it opens those Duke problems. Notice you've got problems 1 through 6 to do 16 to do in lab. You've got homework problems 1 through 16, a subset of which will be assigned to you. And then there's supplemental problems 116 to do for practice if you want. But for each problem, there's one whose file name is the number.pr2 and another one where it's the number p.pr2. p is for practice. The practice problem files uh, let you see the answer. Because of that, you can't do them for credit, either within lab or for homework. So in lab or for homework, you have to do the files without the p in the, in the file name. If you want to do some for practice, go ahead and do the ones with the P. So I'll show you one of the number ones. I double clicked on that. All right, and what opens is a cage of bugs. And what we've got is some traits. This one just has one. Sometimes there will be two or three. And this is wing color. And the wing color can have the phenotypes black or red. And it shows you how many males and females have each of those phenotypes summarizes those numbers here. And if you want to see what that looks like, you click on the magnifying glass icon. And here's our bug. I just call them bugs because while they look kind of like dragonflies, if these were actually dragonflies, all the legs and wings would attach this body part up here. Uh, but you can see these are black wings. If I click here on this other magnifying glass, we see the red wings. Alright, now notice what this says here. These are organisms collected from the wild. So this is just like if we went outside into the woods outside the building with an insect net and collected 21 uh, bugs of the same species. Some had black wings, some had red wings. We had males and females of both. But we collected them out from the wild. We don't have any information about the genotype of these individuals. So Assuming simple dominance, which we are told for problem one, 
uh, we can assume that either some of these black individuals or some of these red individuals are probably heterozygous. And that will always be true unless the problem specifically tells you that all of the individuals in cage one are homozygous. So to figure out whether black or red is dominant, I need to cross the, some of these individuals. So I'm going to start with a black male and a red female. And so I just clicked on one, on one male and one female to choose them. If I had multiple cages open, I could click choose a male from cage one and a female from some other cage, and I could still cross them. They do not have to be in the same cage. To produce offspring, click on this cross button up on the toolbar, and I got all black offspring. So at this point, my hypothesis is that red is recessive. But it could be that black is recessive and this red female was heterozygous, and it just happened to be that uh, she contributed her black allele to all of these offspring. So to uh, test my hypothesis that black is dominant and therefore all of these individuals in the new cage I produced are heterozygous, I want to cross two of these offspring. So I click cross again, and sure enough, I've got from my two black parents here, I produced some red offspring. That's only possible if these two parents were heterozygous. Black is dominant, red is recessive, and so they produced some red offspring. Now notice if I wanted to know, wait, okay, so it says here that the parents of cage 2 are a male and female from cage 1. I want to know, wait, which male was this? So especially so this so I now know that this male is homozygous that could be important to know so if I click on him here in cage 2 he's chosen selected in cage 1 so that can be useful remember you can do that but now that I figured out that red red is recessive I want to record my answer I do that from the utilities menu and choosing show model builder the question told me that this trait is not sex-linked and that it's one gene with two alleles. I also know it's simple dominance, which isn't my only choice here. And I figured out that black is dominant to red. And now I need to choose a cage that, uh, that shows that that's what the right answer is, or that's the best answer, okay? Um, at least it refutes the alternative. So here there's no way that black could be recessive and produce red offspring. So cage three um, is what shows the best evidence for my answer here. All right, at this point, I'm ready to save my work and submit it. So first, I want to just save my work. So if I need to go back and see what I did or work on this some more or show my TA what I did, I have that available to me. So I want to name it with my name and what problem I was working on and save that and it's just saving to my desktop and I'm okay with that. But that's not what I can turn in because the TA can't see the right answers from that. To turn into my TA, I need to save my work for grading. However, this file that's produced from Save Work from Grading, you as a student cannot reopen this file or see what your answers were. Answers were. That's why you should save both ways. All right, and I'm going to save that. And now I'm done working on this, so I'm going to do this close folder button. And I'm going to scoop this over so you can see my files. So I've got two files here. One's WR2, that's my work file. I can reopen that to work on it some more. The other one is a GR2 file. That's the one I have to send to my TA. I cannot reopen that file. So if I wanted to work on it some more, I could go to open work, and it's there at my desktop. So see, it lets me open my w WR2 file, but it's not even showing me my GR2 file as 
an option, okay? And when I open it, there's all my cages in my model builder back again. Now, there was one last thing I wanted to show you. If I wanted to confirm the this by checking to make sure it was a 3 to 1 ratio, with only, let's see, that's 21 and 829 individuals, that's too small a sample size to expect to see a predictable ratio. So I could re- do this cross, so I'm choosing the same male and female, but instead of just hitting this cross button, I go to Utilities and choose Supercross. A thousand is usually a good number, so from the pull down, I choose a thousand, hit OK, and there my cage four is offspring of the same cross, but I've got exactly a thousand. And if I add up these two numbers, I've got 277, and uh, then this should be 723, uh, which is pretty close to the 725 and, or, well, the 750 and 250 that I'd expect from a 3 to 1 cross. It's not exact because there is some random element here, but it's pretty darn close. So if I wanted to check ratios, which I don't have to, uh, that's a way to do it. Where the super cross is be going to be necessary is when you're working on two traits and you want to see if they're linked or not and calculate the map distance. Then you have to have something like a thousand offspring to look at. So the super cross becomes quite necessary. So that's how you do these problems for both class and your homework. Remember when you're turning in a file to be graded for homework, you have to turn in these GR2 files. If you submit WR2 files uh, for grading onto Sakai, I mean the ass assessment, you will receive no credit. You will receive a zero on your homework assignment. So you don't want to do that. Be sure you submit these GR2 files. That said, do save your work with these WR2 files. So if your TA says, no, you're wrong, this cage doesn't show that, or actually the other trait was, the other phenotype was dominant, uh, or whatever, you can show your TA what you did um, to uh, and they can sh or they can show you what you did uh, so you can figure out where you went wrong. All right, hope this video helps. See you in class.